Well, you're Mr. Controversy. You know, you, you stir up the devil, don't you? Well, and you, um, I, I stir up a lot of people. That's perfectly true. But I think that part of the problem of the church historically has been that if you don't have any movers and shakers and nobody dissenting and nobody pointing things out, then you don't have any teaching ministry in the church because you teach by contrast. And um, the Christian church, his days of the church father till today, has been controversial. Uh, there's nothing wrong with controversy for the sake of truth. It's controversy just for the sake of controversy that's a sin. Yes. And controversy that speaks the truth in love <clears throat> is a biblical command. And um, at Christian Research Institute, which uh, uh, I direct, uh, we specialize in dealing with the cults, the occult, non-Christian religions, and apologetics, which is the defense of Christianity. Now, the gentleman who was on before me uh, was talking about Berkeley. And uh, you're asking him questions about what the attitude of the professors was, and so forth. And uh, it's obvious that they're secularists. I know I've taught in university and college <coughs> and seminary for many years. And uh, they obviously are antagonistic to theism and to Christianity. Now, what would it be like if the church never, ever gave anybody any answer? Supposing all you did was go on television and smile at the camera and say, Jesus loves you. And the person out there says, yeah, but what am I going to do with this contradiction between this passage and that passage? Jesus loves you. <laughs> what am I going to do about... I mean, this passage obviously teaches that Jesus is, is uh, the archangel Michael. Uh, Jehovah's Witness says that. Says, well, Jesus loves you. We're going to pray for you. You know what you're going to do? <clears throat> you're going to turn off everybody because people want answers to their questions. I do the Bible Answer Man program, 75 radio markets, uh, about 11 hours a week, live. All across the country, in our major radio markets, we're getting a marvelous controlled survey without asking for it. And you know as a former pastor what this means. People are asking the same questions from Jacksonville, Florida, to Raleigh, North Carolina, to New York City, to um, Massachusetts, New England, across the Midwest, Northwestern states, all the way across the country. Everybody is asking the same questions. Now, when you get a closed experiment like that, where everybody is asking the same questions, then you know that the church is not answering them. Because if they were getting answers to those questions, they wouldn't be calling in my program or Bob Larson's or other shows that specialize in questions and answers and saying anything. <clears throat> They'd be getting all the information at home, but they're not getting it at home. Do you think it's because a lot of them don't know the answers to that and that's why they, they go with the thing, uh, Jesus <clears throat> loves you? Or I, think, I think it's worse than that, Charlene. I think that we've entered into an era which leading to the great apostasy and the rise of the Antichrist, whether you're pre-tribulation, <clears throat> mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation, you're going to get there one way or the other. Sure. Uh, it's all pure tribulation when you get down to it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the truth of the matter is, leading up to this, the scripture says, and we don't pay attention to it, that there will be a lulling of the mind of the church, that the church will accept evil as truth, that the church will accept false prophets rather than true prophets, that when we speak against error, as Paul was doing in his day, who was coming after him? The Corinthians, the Galatians, everybody wanted to scalp. John speaks against the Antichrist. Who's the bad guy? John. Who's the bad guy? Paul. But these are the apostles. Now, in the entire history of the church, I think we discussed part of this one time before, mm -hmm. God raises up apostles in the beginning, prophets, and then the church fathers, then after them the reformers, and so forth. What was the purpose? It was to bring the church back to the path she deviated from, theologically. Now, we have deviated in a massive way today. When you say we, are you talking about the evangelical, born-again world? The evangelical world? hyphen charismatic churches. <clears throat> we're not talking about the liberals. We're talking about the nope. conservatives. Well, we don't even discuss the liberals because, no, because they're not... they, they have nothing anyhow. Right. So what, what, right. Are, what are you wasting your time for? I came from liberalism. Uh -huh. I was educated in Roman Catholic schools, and I was raised in the Episcopal Church. I was designed to be an Episcopal priest by my uh, dean of our cathedral. I would have been, except that 
he spent some time explaining to me that the Bible couldn't be relied upon always. And I knew better, even though I was a youngster, I knew better than that. So I turned away from that. I found out what liberalism was. I was educated in the liberal background, liberal theology. Now, I know the liberals are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I know the cults are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I know the world religions are bankrupt. Otherwise, God wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ into the world to save us. Right. He would have gotten there by Buddha, Moharaster, Confucius, or your Uncle Harry. <laughs> but, God, but God loved the world and sent his son into the world to save it. Now, what's happening, this is true, what's happening is a marked reticence on the part of the professing church <clears throat> to call the proverbial spade a spade. We see Christian leaders on television, and they're asked direct questions on national television. I mean, right out in the open, specifically. Do you believe this? I won't answer them. You have such leaders as Norman Vincent Peale, big power of positive thinking image. Mm -hmm. And Peale goes on the Donahue show. That's coast to coast. That's the biggest talk show you've got. Mm -hmm. And they got to discussing Christianity. And Donahue asked him point blank, is the only way to get to heaven Jesus? No, good, no. I mean, after all, if you're sincere, you're, what's going on here? This is the former pastor of Marble Collegiate Church. I mean, this is a leader in the uh, Protestant, American Protestantism. Mm -hmm. And they get in the middle of the dialogue uh, on the subject of uh, what people believe, and they're criticizing Dr. Peel for some of his views, some of the people. And Donnie, you saw the hell with them. This is, this is the, the people that are criticizing false doctrine. Mm -hmm. To hell with them. Mm -hmm. Peel says, right, to hell with them. Well, I mean, doesn't anybody ever anymore get excited in the presence of evil? Mm. That's the question I'm asking. I mean, doesn't it rile you? Oh, you can get riled about abortion because, I mean, after all, there's a lot of people with you. You can get riled about um, AIDS and homosexuality, even though we're suppressing that as consistently as we can mm -hmm. to protect the gays. Um, uh, we can get excited about that because it's going to kill us. Right. That's why they're getting excited about that. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear anything about it. Blood transfusions. But, but, right. But what else? Nobody wants to come out and say what's wrong for fear that they're going to be criticized, for fear that they'll lose their constituency. <laughs> See? Now, the truth is that if you preach the gospel like it is and you defend the gospel the way you're supposed to, God will take care of your finances and your constituency. Amen. He promises to. Sure. See? You, you do not... Uh, That's good. You, you, you do not get up and tell people what they want to hear to get their pocketbook. Are you suggesting that's going on today? I know it's going on. I mean, I can turn on my television set and I can see it. I mean, there's one major TV network, not this one, Christian TV network, where the host has got to have his, his uh, tear ducts connected to his kidneys because nobody could cry that much. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> how, could you, how could you possibly miss? It's every other minute. Money, money, money. Well, there's nothing wrong with asking for money for the Lord's work. Mm -hmm. But when that is predominant in your approach... I, I it is to, a turn-off. Sure it is. When I went to, uh, yeah. when I went to a big TV network not long ago, I won't discuss which one for the sake of public relations, uh, I went there, and um, uh, they told me that I should speak as the Spirit leads me. Well, that's fair, isn't it? The Spirit leads you. You should speak that way, right? Okay. So as I got up to get on the stage, they handed me a slip of paper like this. <clears throat> it said, try and be positive in everything you say. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to tell me how it's positive to tell somebody they're going to hell. Tell me. <laughs> how positive can you get? It's You're, going hell. <laughs> You're going to hell. You're going to hell. That's positive, huh? Of course not. You're going to have to say, hey, I love praying for you, but, you know, if you, if you follow this path, you're lost. But <clears throat> don't want to do that. So be positive in everything you say. Do not mention Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, or Christian science. Now, here is an internationally recognized cult expert. They said. They introduced me that way. Bring me on the program, fly me 3,000 miles. Sit me down, and before I go on, they hand me a slip of paper that says, be careful what you say about your expertise. Huh? Heavy. Now, he it's not only heavy, it is what nobody wants to face. It's censorship. Sure. 
And that's why Christian networks are going to come up for real legal action in the next five years because there are people out there filming these programs. I know this. Monitoring Christian networks and saying this is not representing the community. This is a money-making fundraising deal and we challenge that. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen because people are getting to the point and there's a lot of money out there that can be used to do this. People out there are saying, hey, how come you can speak on ABC, CBS, NBC, and PBS? That's me. I speak on secular, 10 to 1 on Christian. Do you know mm -hmm. why? Mm. Because the Christians won't let me talk. Because they don't want to hurt anybody. But the seculars will let me talk. How do you like that? Yeah. Well, you're here. Yo, uh, I'm not talking about uh, our program here. Now, you said earlier in the program, I like what you said. You said, we're going to pull any punches, okay? Uh-huh. Pow. You ready for this? All right, go. <laughs> okay. You just named three denominations, and I'm not here to tear them apart, but yeah. you obviously feel they're totally occult and uh, anti-biblical. Okay. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses say that the Trinity is pagan nonsense, that Jesus Christ is the Archangel Michael, that his death on the cross did, wasn't even on a cross, it was on a torture stake. It didn't pay for your sins, you got to work for it. And when he rose from the dead, he arose as a ghost. Plus the fact that he came back in 1914 invisibly and has been running the kingdom from Brooklyn. That ought to, tur that ought to turn you off immediately, okay? Then you've, Brooklyn. Got, then you've got the Mormon church, Donnie and Marie Osmond, right? The Mormon Tabernacle Choir, mine eyes have seen the glory, right? You got that. Beautiful. Beautiful, marvelous. What's behind it? Mormon church says, as God was, as God is, man, may be, as man is, God once was. As God is, man may become. You can become a God. Mormonism. Jesus Christ is the spirit brother of Lucifer, who became the devil. They teach that? Oh, yes. Not only that. So obviously anything you say tonight, you have documented proof. Oh, I teach in a law school. Do you think I'm a fool? <clears throat> right. Crazy I might be. I'm not a fool. No. Okay. Carry now, on. Uh, is not... I, think we should get, I think we should get the Hawaiians back to saying the fight is on. And... <laughs> But let's, let's get the record straight. Okay, carry the on. The cults declared war on the church. We now, didn't I agree with you out. here. I agree with We're you. We're supposed to respond to that, you see? Right. But that's what you're not getting. Instead, you're getting, shh, don't say that. That's not loving. Well, by that standard, neither was Jesus. Because when he met the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and the Herodians, he barbecued them. Matthew 23. I'm very mild. I mean, compared to his dealing with false doctrine. Now, Christ dealt with it. Paul dealt with it. Uh, we're not dealing with it. We don't want to face it. Now, Jehovah's the Mormons absolutely categorically say that when Jesus Christ came into the world, into existence by sexual relations between a resurrected God and the Virgin Mary. Now, that's blasphemous garbage. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Now, why won't our Christian leadership that dominates our major networks and dominates the country come together and say Mormonism is the most rapidly growing dangerous non-Christian cult in the world and we've got to stand together against it. Why won't they do it? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the mind science cults are all over the place. Christian science, religious science. Um, I could go, there's, there's Christian science. Um, the various mind science, Unity School of Christianity, all of them deny the Trinity. All of them deny the deity of Christ. All of them deny the blood atonement of the cross that you're talking about advertising that book. Yes. They deny it categorically. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead in his own body. That's a classical attack on Christianity. Tell me why the Christian church should be silent in the face of those attacks. No, I think you're right. And I think it's good that you're sitting here tonight from my personal point of view saying what you're saying. Let me go to an, another approach for a moment. Matthew chapter 15. Yeah. Jesus said about these who taught other doctrines, right. let them alone. Now, the philosophy today, maybe on a lot of Christian networks and organizations, Christian 
organizations is, hey, if that guy over there on that corner in that church is all the organizations that you've just mentioned, plus others, is not teaching truth, and we believe that they're not teaching truth, let them alone. God will deal with the tares simultaneously with the wheat at the time of the harvest. Their idea is, and I want you to, I, I need an answer to this, yep. is let's preach the gospel, which is the truth, and the preaching of the truth automatically counteract error, and we don't have to bother them, in the words of Jesus, let them alone, just preach the truth that'll counteract the error. Don't get involved with them. Look at your context of Matthew 15. He's not telling you to leave false teachers alone. There were people going around healing in his name, yes. using his name and right. so forth. Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're with us. Right. Leave them alone. But these people are against us. They've declared against us. So that position, the position then that I yeah. just mentioned yeah. of preach the truth, it'll automatically counteract error, leave the personalities and the names out, you don't agree with it. No, not only don't I agree with it, I don't know one major theologian in the history of the entire Christian church that will agree with it. I don't know one commentary that will exegete <clears throat> Matthew 15 to teach that. Now, if you really want to get technical on what the texts say, 47% of the New Testament, according to this, who's the greatest, one of the greatest living New Testament scholars, is apologetic, which means defending Christianity. Yes. If you could just turn the truth loose and let it do its job and not defend it, why do you have all the admonitions in the Scripture? Contend earnestly for the faith, once for all delivered unto the saints. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. They shall gather to themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, and the truth of God will be turned into mythology. Reprove them, rebuke them, exhort them with patience and teaching. Where's the rebuke? Where's the reproof? Where's the exhortation? You see, the people who are telling us not to defend Christianity are the people incapable of doing it. Mm -hmm. And the danger, the danger is, not only are they are incapable of doing it, but they hinder those that are capable. They stand in the way of the defense of the gospel. Okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so you believe old. church and Christian broadcasting should take a far more militant stand and come right out and name the baby John. I can see no reason why we do not follow a biblical principle. First of all, I'm a professor in a law school, Simon Greenleaf School, school right. of Law. We had Dr. Dr. Montgomery on here. on here, right. He did a great job well, Wednesday he's night. He's a brilliant man, and he he's is. done a great job for God. The point that we're making, and he's making, and the school's making, and a lot of us are making in the Christian world, that we're growing in numbers. We're not diminishing. I'm happy to say the young people are listening to us. Praise the Lord. And the more they listen, the more other people are going to listen, because they're the future of the church. Whatever future we've got left, it's young people. I've stopped talking to the theologians because the theologians are too busy in the ivory tower. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to the kids who are out there fighting for their lives mm -hmm. because nobody's helping them. Right. And, and what we're facing, what we're facing is a direct denial of the defense of Christianity. And Dr. Montgomery brought that up. I brought that up. Others have brought it up. And the more we defend Christianity, the more people are going to say, well, that has merit to it. The more we obey Scripture, the more people will listen to us. Remember the apostles defended the gospel before the Sanhedrin? They didn't walk into the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 3 and 4 and say, well, I mean, you stay on your synagogue and, and your temple, and we'll stay on our corner, and we're going to leave you alone. You leave us alone, and don't worry anymore. I mean, after all, God we preach the gospel, and God's going to save people anyhow. So you guys go about your way, we'll go about our way. Is that what you get? You get Peter saying in there, whether it's proper to obey God or man, mm -hmm. you decide. Mm -hmm. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby you must be saved. Jesus Christ. Well, why do we not enunciate that against Jewish, Islamic, Christ, non-Christian religions and cultic structures in the United States that are constantly attacking Christianity? Why do we not respond to them? Why don't we train the young people? Why don't we make a defense of the gospel in our day? And the reason is because we're afraid we're going to get people mad at us. They're not going to like us anymore. They're not going to support our work. And then we're going to get turned off. But do you well, think there's a, a better way to do it? Because, like, if you came on all, all the time, say these networks came on and, and they were blasting. always t blasting, 
other well, religions. I'm not suggesting that. Instead of maybe teaching them, do, do you think it would help to like teach them while they were? If you just tell somebody, hey, you know, this I'm is suggesting right. you're right. I'm suggesting balance. Right. I'm suggesting that instead of being all over on the evangelism side, and the teaching of the Christian life, we teach also the defense of Christianity. How you stand up for your faith. <laughs> Listen, you know this as well as I know it. You've had enough experience. Secular colleges, universities, and liberal seminaries eat Christians alive. You send a kid from a Christian home and a Christian church into a liberal situation and into a secular humanistic context mm -hmm. And they go in like a revolving door. They're singing all hail the power of Jesus' name going in, and they come out bearded, bathless, and rebellious. And nobody knows what happened to them. Mm -hmm. I know what happened to them. I was there. Mm -hmm. I think you do, too. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any answers and reasons for their faith. None. I'm not suggesting we yeah. go on television and blast all the time. I'm suggesting that part of our television programming, our radio programming, our Christian educational approach take into consideration the necessity of training people to defend the gospel and their faith. I agree with you, and I, and I must say this. Um, <clears throat> I don't get a chance to watch a lot of Christians. Watch this network as much as I possibly can, and I, I see a trend that should be pleasing to you from your point of view that on Trinity Broadcasting, they're moving more and more, not into just we're going to entertain we and inspire you with music, and... Uh, teach the basic fundamental elementary truths of the Bible, but I see a move in some of the ministries on this channel that are getting into an apologetic presentation of the defense of Christianity. Maybe it's taken a while to get there because we're told to love your enemy. Well, loving your enemy doesn't mean that you become John and Mabel doormat. True. And, but I, I and see, Paul and loved I his enemies, too. Mm -hmm. But God help you if you got in the way. That's right. Look what he did to the Galatians. Well, you, you stupid Galatians. That, that's Paul. That's not me. You stupid Galatians. He did. Somebody else used that word yeah. stupid here tonight. I, I... Man, and today, if I said, you stupid Christians, everybody say, oh, Walter Martin is insulting the body. Paul writes, and he takes the gloves off and says, you stupid Galatians, whoever led you away from the truth I gave you. And so soon, how dumb can you be? And he chews them up for three chapters. Right? That's right. I mean, he gets to the Corinthians, it's a good thing I'm not there. <laughs> right? And it's a good thing I'm not there, because if I was there, That's well, right. look out, you see. Now, what happened to Peter? Uh, chewing away in Second Peter on the people that are pushing the truth into the background. Sure. What about Paul? The people who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. What is censorship but the suppression of truth? If you can't speak, you're violating the First Amendment of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I'm not attacking the cults. I spent 35 years of my life bringing people out of cults to Jesus Christ. Which is a great ministry. Yeah. Fantastic ministry. I'm not going to attack them. Yeah. I love them. I love them. But you're going to show where they're in error. But if I don't show where they're in error... Then you're wrong. If the, right, I'm wrong. And if the Trump on certain sound, mm -hmm. says Paul, mm -hmm. then how will you prepare yourself for battle? You see, the me methodology and the philosophy governing the... Christians today in many areas is there is no battle. The only battle you've got is the battle that you don't have enough faith. Or the only battle you've got is you haven't got a new Mercedes or you're not healthy enough. These are the battles they're fighting. Or whether Jesus came after the tribulation before it or in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're majoring in the minors mm -hmm. and they're forgetting that if you don't defend the gospel, you're disobeying Christ.